Thomas M. Dyke has retired. In the history of the submarine force, tales of courage are easy to find. But courage is a strange commodity. Under fire or under the pressure of danger to oneself, men will rise to unbelievable heights of heroism. Yet there is another form, much more rare and consequently more impressive, when with nothing personal to be gained, a man will gamble against tremendous odds for something he believes in. This is the story of such a man. On 26 August 1942, the USS Sea Dragon, SS-194, departed Fremantle, West Australia, on her fourth war patrol. Destination, the South China Sea, to conduct an offensive patrol against enemy shipping. With Lieutenant Commander Wesley E. Farrell of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in command, Sea Dragon proceeded to a assigned station via Lombok, Macassar, and Sibitu without incident. Except for the usual number of bark shins and scraped knuckles, which were competently handled by pharmacist mate Wheeler B. Lipes. Trained as a pharmacist mate, Lipes had been transferred to a service hospital in Philadelphia, where he qualified as a lab technician, earning a special rating as a cardiographer before being assigned to submarines. What's the matter? Something wrong, Captain? Smokey, did you ever get the feeling you should have stood in bed? Yeah, I know what you mean. We've been chasing our tails ever since we got here, and we hadn't fired a single torpedo. Not a thing to shoot at. Oh, it'll pick up, Captain. There's got to be some targets someplace. Yeah, I don't know. I've got a hunch this is not going to be one of our more successful patrols. Well, let's hope you're wrong. Man with you, Rector. You like my cooking? It's not you, Cookie. I, I just don't feel. If you don't want it, I do. Matter of fact, don't you feel well? Not too good, Doc. No. I think I'll lie down for a little while. Oh, cool. Give me a hand. Smoke off the starboard bow. Right full rudder. All ahead flank. Come right to course zero, seven, zero. Maybe you're right, Smokey. Would be there are some targets left. Captain? What is it, Lipes? It's Rector, sir. I think he may have appendicitis. Appendicitis? Are you sure? No, sir, but he's got all the symptoms. Nausea, temperature of 101, pains in the stomach. Couldn't it be just a bellyache? Yes, sir, it could be, but... What do we do if it is his appendix? Well, sir, we're a long way from Australia. All right, Doc. Keep a sharp eye on Let me know if it gets any worse. Hi, right, Captain. <laughs> Her four engines on the line, Sea Dragon raced to close her target. How does it feel, Rector? It's murder, Doc. It's the granddaddy of all belly aches. Where's the pain? Any one spot? Uh, all over. It comes and goes. Right around here. Take it easy, kid. I'll be right back. Stay with him. I want to have another look at the Corman's manual. What's the radar range now? 20,000 yards, Captain. As a zig once. Smokey, call the plug. Aye, aye, sir. Clear the bridge. Dive, dive. 
Let me know when the target gets to 10,000 yards and changes course. Aye, aye, sir. Mike, how's Rector? Oh, Booth is with him. I've been checking the manual. He's got all the classic symptoms. All right, let's go take a look at him. How do you feel, Rector? Not too good, Captain. Pain still there? Hurts pretty good, Doc. But not in the same place. The cramps are gone now. It's more of a steady pain right here. Let me take a look. Oh. Is it? I'm afraid so, Captain. I don't know what else it could be. Great. It's just what we needed. Well, you're the doc. What do we do now? Well, we could try packing the area on ice. With any luck, we could prevent it from getting worse. Give it a try. Doc will have you on your feet in no time, Rector. Can't have you loafing around. I'll be all right, sir. Just a bellyache. Captain of the counting tower. Captain of the counting tower. Do what you can. Let me know if there's any change. Yes, sir. See that he stays quiet. I'm going to get some ice. All right. You want some water or something, buddy? No, he doesn't. Don't give him anything, understand? Well, sure, Doc. Ten thousand yards, Captain. He hasn't changed course once. Good. Now, scope. Battle stations! Cookie, better get on it. Sure thing, Doc. Torpedo depth's at eight feet. Up scope. Right down the middle. Stand by, final observation and shoot. Hang on the bow. Sixty port. Bearing. Mark. Zero one five. Range. Mark. One four double O. Set. Shoot. Fire one. Fire two. Running time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ding dong. Over two, Bob. Take a look. I'm getting breaking up noises, Captain. Holy smoke! What's the matter? There's nothing there. Must have gone down like a rock. Down scope! Secure from battle stations! Secure from battle stations! Any better? How's it going, Rector? I heard something awful, Captain. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> what was all that about? He's getting worse, Captain. A lot worse, and that spot's getting more rigid. I'm afraid his appendix is going to burst. Doesn't stand much chance, does he? No, sir. Unless we operate. I think we'd better have us a talk, Doc. Calder, put those packs back where they were, and if you need more ice cooked, you'll get it. And be gentle. I'll be right back. You bet, Doc. Sit down, Lights. 
Light, you're a good pharmacist, mate, but you're not a doctor. Now, how sure are you that an operation is necessary? According to the manual, what I learned in the hospital, pretty sure, sir. You've got to be sure than that. Captain, unless Rector's operated on immediately, he won't live to do another patrol. Doc, when you say we can operate, you mean you. Unless there's somebody else aboard who's better qualified. No, there's nobody else. It's your baby. And you'll be gambling with a man's life. Yes, sir. Have you ever performed an operation like this? No, sir. I've only seen a couple in the hospital in Philadelphia. Now, Doc, if you try this and Rector dies, nobody will be able to blame you. But you'll have to live with it the rest of your life. Captain, if I don't try this and he dies, I'll have to live with that, too. All right, Doc. From here on in, the boat is yours. Anything you want, just holler. We'll give you all the help we can. Thank you, Captain. And, uh, Doc. Good luck. For the remainder of the night, there was no rest for those aboard the Sea Dragon who were involved in the history-making operation. In a situation where a veteran surgeon might well throw up his hands, pharmacist mate Wheeler B. Lights quietly began his preparations. Alcohol was taken from the torpedo supply to make a sterilizing solution for the instruments to be used. With virtually no operating instruments at his disposal, Leitz was forced to draw on his own ingenuity and the memory of the operations he had seen to invent his own. For retractors, Leitz had to use spoons bent into the proper shapes. Extra hemostats were fashioned out of electrical clamps. Sulfur tablets were ground to powder for use as an antiseptic. His makeshift preparations as complete as he could get them, Lipes called his staff together for a final briefing. Lieutenant Charles C. Manning would act as chief nurse. The exec Lieutenant Norval Ward would be chief assistant. Calder and Booth would administer the anesthetic. The skipper, Pete Farrell, would act as roving troubleshooter. Now, his final decision made and his final orders being carried out, there was just time for a quick run through the corpsman's manual and a last check on his patient. Rector, can you hear me? I hear you, Captain. You know, we've got to operate. Uh -huh. This isn't like giving you a couple of aspirin or like sewing your head up the time you hit it on the hatch. This could be dangerous. You're my buddy, Doc. You won't let anything happen. Rector, listen. I've never done an operation before. If anything goes wrong, you may die. Quit worrying, Doc. I ain't gonna die. There's nothing to be afraid of. We'll, we'll both be all right. Ten forty-five, eleven September, 1942, for Darrell Dean Rector, Seaman First Class. It was the point of no return. Control room, Hastings. We're ready to go, Harry. Take it down to 120 feet. 120 feet, aye, aye sir. Anytime you're ready, Doc. Okay, boys. Easy, Rector. Breathe deep. Let's have a final check. You got everything you need, Doc? Scalpel, scissors, retractors, needles, clamps, dividers.
For a moment, the enemy above was forgotten as the men of the Sea Dragon concentrated on the war one of their own was waging, a war in which they couldn't participate. Bernie's point is halfway between the anterior superior spine of the right ilium. That's right here. And the navel. Dividers. Yes? Level off at 120 feet, Jeff. Very well. Harry? Sir? Keep her level. She'll be level, Jim. Dauber? I'll take that, Mr. Manning. I figure I'll need more room than a surgeon would, so I'm going to make a three-inch incision. How is he? Out cold, Doc. Towels. Sponge. Clamp. Mr. Warren. Gently, with almost slow motion care, lights cut through the skin layer, through the subcutaneous fat. Retractors. Through the three layers of muscle that lie underneath. And finally to the peritoneum, the tissue thin covering that lines the abdominal cavity. Here, more than anywhere else, a slip of the scalpel could mean the patient's life. Retractors. Calder. Take over. You all right? I'll be, I'll be okay, Captain. I guess it kind of got me for a minute. You better stay out there for a while. We can't have you keeling over in here. Yes, sir. Sound contact. Bearing, one, nine, five. Yes, what is it? Sound contact, Captain. Bearing, one, nine, five. Rig for silent running. Let me know if he gets close enough to worry about. Aye, sir. I'm in the abdominal cavity, Mr. Ward. Can you get the lining under the retractors? The rest are to... What is it, Lifes? Appendix. It should be right here on top. Well? It's not there. What do you mean, it's not there? Take it easy, Smokey. You didn't lose it on purpose. It's got to be here someplace. 
Relax, Doc. You're doing a beautiful job. I'll find it. For what seemed like hours, lights probed cautiously but blindly. In a space just wide enough to admit two fingers, he searched for an object that only a trained surgeon would be expected to know by feel. They're shifting to short scale. Screw speeding up. Closing fast. Yes? Screw is closing fast, Captain. I rig for depth charge. Got it. Clamp. Grab those retractors, scalpel. Nearing the home stretch now, the infected appendix removed, Lipes continued towards the conclusion of the job. But even this close to the end, he would not be hurried. Slowly and painstakingly, he closed the incisions he had made, making sure that there would be no later infection or complication. At 1322, two and a half hours after he had started, Sulfur. Finished. Good boy, Lipes. It was a beautiful job. Boy, you can say that again. Anytime I get a busted appendix, Doc, you can take them out. Doc, I want to cook you the best meal you ever ate. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's a clamp missing. Oh, no. I got it. <laughs> okay. You won't have to go back inside looking for it. Captain, it's a good thing that clamp isn't inside a rector, because if it had been, it would just have to stay there. I couldn't go through that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. It is our privilege to have with us the executive officer of the Sea Dragon during the events you've just seen, Captain N.G. Ward. Bob, when you decided years ago to become a submariner, I'll bet you never dreamed you'd become the chief assistant to a pharmacist mate in a major operation. I certainly didn't. But by then, I had been in submarines long enough to know that anything can happen. And it usually does. It must have taken a great deal of courage for Lipes to undertake that surgery and for Rector to consent to it. Yes, and for the captain to authorize it. Rector must have been a pretty sick boy. He was. It didn't take more than one glance at him to know that something drastic had to be done, and quick. It's a tribute to Lipes and to the training of our pharmacist mates that he was capable of doing such a fine job when he had to. Had there been any other course of action, we would have taken it because the Navy doesn't condone operations by other than qualified doctors. Yes, I've seen them flown to some pretty remote places in emergencies. Of course, we were too deep in enemy waters for that. I understand Lipes was promoted for his fine piece of work. Yes, he was, and he certainly deserved it. I couldn't agree more. Thank you, Bub, for your visit. Please be with us again for another true story of the silent service. <laughs> Take the down and up in line Through the deep